together. One, two, three, four. Give thanks to the Lord, our God, our King. His love endures forever. He is good and is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, His love endures forever. For the love that's been reborn, His love endures forever. In our community, oh, much better. Good morning, people at home. Um, you probably were not hearing me well as I was speaking, um, but it was it was really nice. It was really nice. We had even people from our community to help out with the uh, selling of um, the snacks, and um, it was just uh, we have probably hundred people out there or plus. Um, from our school, from our church, and from the uh, um, community uh, that just came over, and uh, it, it, it was it was a blessing. The movie is amazing. I don't know if you watch Luca. Uh, if you haven't, I'm gonna you know uh, invited to watch that movie. It's a beautiful message with it as well. So um, today the message is focused on God's love, putting aside our selfishness okay that's what the message is going to be so please stand as you're able as we begin this worship time to the lord and um just uh as you are here already you made it um and if you are at home this is a time just to kind of put all those things that are bugging us you know all those things that are just heavy on us today just to put them on the side for now and say lord we are just living uh, living there 
for you, Lord, so you can take care, so you can help us. The blessing of Father, Spirit, Son, Holy Trinity, three in one, be in our meeting and in our greeting, in the worship we share and the words of our prayers. And we all say, Amen. 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 Please turn around and say good morning to whoever's right there next to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I can't wait to the day that we can just kind of give a hug, high fives, shake hands, all of that. But um, Hernandez, the Hernandez family, if you go to your um, directory, uh, Joel, uh, one of the sons of uh, Mercedes, it's in the hospital in, Trini in uh, uh, Tri-City, uh, COVID. It's been like three weeks already, and he's still hooked up to every machine possible. And uh, so please uh, pray for Joel Hernandez as we, uh, he heals, you know, from this virus that is just so. Um, a family member, a, a friend of a family member also, they had the doctor's meeting to come and say goodbye to grandpa because it's just uh, not happening and he's been there months to trying to fight it but artificial life is what's holding uh, right now but uh, I think they are to the point where the doctors are saying there's nothing else it's been too long now and he's not showing any signs so continue continue to pray for those that are struggling let us sing together children of our of the heavenly father <laughs> Children of the Heavenly Father, safely in His bosom gather, nestling bird nor star in heaven, such a refuge ever given. God His own doth tend and nourish, in His holy courts they flourish, from all us oh okay there's one in the back so yeah whoever is teaching today I'm not sure I didn't check who is take him out have fun I remember those days Sunday school it's a lot of fun let us prepare ourselves for confession and forgiveness this is the time that we say Lord have mercy on us Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracle, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. <clears throat> God, our provider. Help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. 
Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished by Jesus, the worker of miracles. There is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to, as we prepare for the prayer of the day, to open up your Bibles, if you have your Bible with you, or pull out that phone and find Bible Gateway um, that has the NRSV, which is a version we use here at First Lutheran. If you're at home, uh, we're going to be reading James, so if you can prepare, and the Gospel of Mark right after our prayer. Oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all our envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first reading comes from James chapter 3, verses 13 through chapter 4, verse 3, and then chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful, boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they didn't understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. 
This is the word of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. You know, God's love always comes through in a lot of cases. We, in a lot of times, we kind of ignore that and our sinfulness comes through first. And it's, it's just a lot of times we, it's just kind of as part of who we are. It's in, it's on our DNA. It's the nature of us. As much as we want to, as much as in our heart, you know, we desire. Paul keeps saying, you know, the things that I don't want to do is what I end up doing. Um, <clears throat> I remember uh, years ago we got the men together to go and do uh, K1 speed. And there were probably like 15 of us grown men, okay? We're not talking youth. Old men. And we all got into this little go-kart here in Carlsbad. And man, yeah, we all wanted to be number one. We all want, whatever it, whatever it takes, we want to be number one. We wanted to end up first. Um, I remember this one time, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the people that came, he, he worked, uh, I don't know, in a, in a car dealer, and he, he loved to write those things. And he was not going to end up in second place. He said, second place is for first losers. And it's like, no. And Pastor Steve Albury was there. And I remember on one of those turns, I was right behind him. And the other guy was in front. Steve was in the middle. And so how um, he passes the first place. And he went like, oh, no. So I was watching this whole thing. Well, at one point in the turn, Steve Cars went, car, little car went like this. And the guy behind was just like, man, like, just T-bone his little, did not flip him, but fracture his rib. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a game, right? But... It chose. It chose our sinfulness, or wanted to be first, to have the power. Um, I don't know what day it was. I think it was Thursday or Friday. It was late. I had a late meeting here. I text my daughter and said, you still want to go work out? And she goes, no, I got homework. I'm like, okay, good. I still went to the gym, but I didn't work out. I sat in the jacuzzi. And I'm thinking there, okay, I have my phone, and I had a, like a long list of things to do, and I kind of got this new, new way of getting things done where I put my people to text, things to email, people to call, things to do, things to go get, you know, things to pray for, people to pray for. So I have them all like in one page in these categories, and I start checking as I go throughout the day. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, I got my phone, but I don't have my notes, so I have no idea what, you know, what I, I could do as I was sitting there. So I'm thinking work as I'm in the jacuzzi. And then I am started thinking, I'm going to have to create an app where I could do the same thing as in a piece of paper and synchronize my tablet, my phone, and my computer and now I'm there sitting in jacuzzi, imagining creating this app and becoming a millionaire. You know, making a ton of money with this thing. And I was like, and suddenly I find myself thinking, what am I going to do with, the, with all the money? And I'm going to confess, it wasn't church. It, it shows our sinfulness, our desire. But Jesus is always flipping things around for us, especially for those that are struggling with this one thing. 
Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Be last and be servant of all. I got to be honest, this is very difficult. I don't know for you. It, it, for me, it is. Even as a pastor, you know, my, my calling, my gift, it's about compassion. It's about kindness. It's about loving. But not always comes that first. You know, it, it, is, it is difficult. That's not what's happening in the world right now. That's not what is, what is happening in our community, in our homes. We don't let people be first. We want to be first. We don't let people. We don't serve people. We want to be served. I'm sure this is not, not a new verse for you guys, right? We all know it. We all heard it. We all say it. We all refer to it. We all Whoa, this verse. Whoever wants to be first must be last. Whoever wants to be first needs to serve first. But our sinfulness comes through first. That's what happens, you know. I started coming to this church, started paying attention to the sermons, started to hear some words of encouragement. I started to hear some words of correction you know, throughout the sermon, throughout the message. Words of hope. But when it was those things of correction, I'd be walking out of here and say, Lord, I know exactly what you want me to do. You want me to put other people first, other people's needs first. All right, you want me to serve people, to, to be available. Like, okay. Now, this is before seminary. Okay, I'm just telling you. I'm and um, <clears throat> walking out of this doors, I'll be inspired, moved by the message. But then Monday happens. I will go work at this company that had nothing to do with being last or serve others. It was all about power, money, and everything else. But this. I was like, Lord, come on. I just want to do what I heard this Sunday and apply it and do it. was difficult. A lot of times I didn't even get to Monday. <laughs> just coming out of this door, getting my family into the car. That was it. You know, I have to be right in all of this. And it's, it's, it's not, you know, that's not what Jesus is talking about. Our sinfulness comes through. And, and that, I think, is what Jesus is trying to change. Trying to bring across to the people that are there listening what it means to be great. What it means to be great. Hmm. It's not about being number one, for sure. That's not what Jesus is talking about, but the world is telling us that it is. I mean, there, there's nothing with having money and wealth. There's nothing wrong with that. Is when our sinfulness comes through, right? That's where the problem is. Me sitting in the jacuzzi and having this million-dollar with me already in my head thinking, oh man, Costa Rica, that's, that's what it was in my head. You know, I want to go to Costa Rica and surf there. I'm like, that would be plenty, right? It's all about power. And Jesus said, no, it's not. It's not being a number one. It's not a being, you know, first. It's not being the one that has the control, the fame, the wealth. Or no. It's not about being the big deal. It's the other way around. It's the other way around. Who sees on the Super Bowl Sunday, who sees on Monday morning the second place or the team that lost the Super Bowl celebrating 
yes, we got second place. Or No, right? It's all about the first place. I remember, you know, I'm not a soccer player. I, I don't know how I end up surfing instead of playing soccer. I don't know. That's just weird, right? But uh, <laughs> I, I never liked it. But somewhere back when I was a child, my dad thought I was gifted. It's like, Dad, come on. Anyway, we always lost. We always lost. But there was one time, I was 12, we got to the championships, and we won. And man, it was the best feeling ever. The trophy was bigger than this, I think. And we're like, ha! Yeah. Oh, like this. Um, bigger than me, for sure. It was so cool. We, we made history in my little town, uh, just my little town, but people remembered that team for a long time. Someone visited us at home from Mexico, and the son of the family uh, find out that I play in the Hersam. That was the name, okay? Hernandez, Her, Sam, Zamora. That was the name of the, the owner of the team. And so when he find out that I played, he couldn't believe. I'm like, Ramon, you're not even good at soccer. It's like, I know, right? But I made history. I don't know how. I, I did it. I don't remember the losing. I, I remember the winning. I remember that one time. We were the big deals in that little town. We, we were the greatest of all, right? As Christians, we are called to put that aside and put others first. How can we do that? Love and kindness. It all comes down to that. That's what Jesus is telling. It's not a being great in our own terms. It's being great in God's terms. Serving others. Putting yourself first over the poor, uneducated, minorities, foreigners. Yeah. But that's not what the society tells us. It's all the way around. You know, people put you down. The people that have the power, the big deals. When I work at this company, um, the company had given us a credit card. And there was this one guy. His name was Juan. Not me. Another Juan. Okay. And Juan would drive to work all the way from past L.A. And it was like a two, three hours drive every day. Come right at 7 to Carlsbad. Leave home. Be at home around 7 p.m. But he was a hard worker. And the owners will, like, pick, up, pick that up and say, Ramon, um, it was Friday, take Juan to lunch. And I said, okay. I said, Juan, where do you want to go to lunch? And Juan picked up a restaurant that he sees through the freeway. Brand new restaurant. This is about 16, 17 years ago. Brand new restaurant. You probably know it. Kingfish in Carlsbad. That's where the outlets were, kind of came about, and they put that restaurant right in front. I want to go to Kingfish. I think that's the name of it. And I said, sure, yeah. So we work all day. Now, he is uh, hands-on where he gets muddier, and, and he doesn't care. He gets the job done. And so we went to Kingfish Restaurant. When, I, when we got there, I realized that maybe we're underdressed a little bit. <laughs> I didn't care. He's going to eat here. We went into this restaurant, and um, the manager comes to us. I'm like, oh, man, they're taking care of us here. Um, they thought we were some sort of employer 
E people there that we were doing some work. I'm like, that's not cool. And I, it was fun and sad at the same time. And I said, no, we're here to have lunch. Give us the best table. And they, oh, I said Juan, what you want? Lobster. I'm like, okay. That's what society, you know, a lot of times deals with being first, being in power, putting people down. Jesus is talking about something different. When he sees the disciples arguing, even the disciples had to deal with this. They were dealing with this one thing. What are you guys arguing about? Now, he knew, right? He knew exactly what they were arguing about. He wanted to be, they wanted to be the big deals among themselves. The sinfulness coming through. So he asked, what were you arguing about along the way? But they were silent. <laughs> Oops, they were silent. Jesus got them. Because they were arguing with one another who was going to be the greatest who was going to be the big deal? Now, that's familiar to us, right? And, and relationship happens a lot. And friendships happens a lot. In companies, and at work, you know, who's going to be the first? And, and I'm going to say it again. Being successful and, and having wealth, there's nothing wrong with that. Is when the sinfulness takes over. So, Jesus answered this question for them. Not so much for the sake of himself, but for the sake of those that were listening. You want to be first? Serve others. You want to be number one? Put others first. And he explains how, grabs a kid, said, if you welcome one of this, if you serve one of this, Whoever welcome, welcomes one such a child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This picture of a child and Jesus telling this illustration, a lot of times, you know, we use that and we teach about, you know, what it is to be a child of God and all of that. But I think uh, I wanted to emphasize on what was a child back then in Jesus' time? How was a child treated in Jesus' time? Right? Remember who were the minority or the, uh, what's the word, marginalized women and children? And they were like a minus out of class. And so Jesus is telling whoever welcomes one like this. In other words, those are pushed to the side. Those are people don't care for. Those are when we serve someone, a lot of times we're expecting something in return. You know, that's the sinfulness coming through. Jesus is saying, if you're going to serve somebody, serve one of these. The ones are not going to give you anything back. Don't expect anything back because they don't have anything. Serve someone like that. So who are those in our society today? Who are the ones that God is calling us to serve, to help, to give? Remember Matthew 25, 40? He was talking about being greatness in God's eyes. The hungry, the thirst, the naked, the sick, the imprisoned. Those are the ones that symbolize this one child that he's talking about at that time. Greatness is not about being in power, but being of service. Greatness is simply let the, lo the, the, the love of God 
take over, not our sinfulness. Making kindness to be our priority in our lives. So in knowing God's love and how God loves us, putting our sinfulness on the side and show God's love through our kindness. That's how Jesus is explained, and this is what it means to be great. If you love those who love you, that's no big deal. What credit is that to you? For even sinner loves those who love them. If you lend to those from who you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much gain. He said also to the one who had invited him, when, when you give food or a dinner, a lunch, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors just in case they may invite you in return and you would be paid off. No. He is describing what being greatness in God's term is. It's not in our own term. It's in God's term that we need to understand. And that starts in our hearts as we see the need around us. This God's work our hands, that's the beginning of. It's not it. These beans are going to go to Mexico and feed children, families. This food is going to go to the shelter and feed those families. Those quilts that were made, those lunches that were given. We got a cart from Head Start saying thank you, and they list all the blessings that they received through what we did on Sunday morning. I went to visit some of the family, some of the people that the praise team went to sing on Sunday. And I had to write you guys what one of our members told me, because she said, I can't write anymore, but can you give this message to who came and sing? It was so wonderful. It was so touching. I really appreciate that you guys came to visit. And she was saying all of this with tears on her eyes, with joy, because somehow we brought the love of God. That's what Jesus is talking about. That's what Jesus is telling to the disciples. Yes, we are sinners. But it begins here, the desire to do good for the sake of others, not with the agenda trying to get something back. I heard my children, you know, they fight a lot. Your children fight a lot? Yeah, right? Especially at that age. Well, they argue. They don't fight. They argue. But from time to time, very often, I hear them saying, I'm sorry for not being nice to you. I'm going to be kind from now on. Now, how long does that last? You can ask them. But that's the beginning of. That's where God wants us to start. Putting aside our sinfulness or the wanting to be right first, have the power. Make God's love visible to others. You know, not just talk it. That's easy. God bless you. I wish I could help. That's a fun sentence to use, right? God bless you. Let me see. What is happening? How can I help? That's what Jesus making God's love visible. Regardless of the status of those people, language, color, nationality, position, let us be like Jesus, 
following those teachings that he left us. God wants us to show love, kindness, compassion to others, especially to the children of our days. Let us welcome all people, especially those who are less fortunate, especially those who are powerless. Let us see the children of our days with compassion, with love, with kindness. May God bless us as we see these teachings of Jesus and we see the needs of our neighbors and become that good Samaritan every day without expecting, without asking to pay it back. Simply serve others. Amen. Please stand as you're able, and I'm going to invite you to get ready to sing this song. It's a beautiful song. You might, you might have heard it before. You might know it. It's very popular. Ten thousand reasons. Let us sing and bless the Lord. Oh 
this way um, and share with us a little bit of what you guys did um, during chapel and uh, or Sunday school um, right up here if you can stand up here so they can see you and hear you I have a microphone to give to you guys and um, tell us what uh, what happened with this uh, awesome group you had well first of all Miss Patty is joyful. She had kids to teach. Three of them. <laughs> Jaden and Benji and Damien. It was wonderful. And we learned the same thing as you guys did. The first will be last. The last will be first. And we're going to serve. Now, I have to say I'm a slow color. You should see, I only got the hair on one of these kits. See? I'm slow because I do a, a, a crazy thing. Benji, he did good. Show your picture. This is Jesus with the children. He's saying to those disciples, hey, Jaden, show your picture, hon. You did good, too. He's saying, hey, these kids, they're, they're important to us. They shared about what they had for breakfast, about praying. Yes, saying little prayers. Now, Miss Patty admits when she's really hungry, stomach growling, she doesn't say the prayer right away. She takes a bite or two of food, and then I remember, well, they said the same thing. Once in a while, they start eating, and then they remember. God wants us to remember if it's the first minute or the last minute. He's always with us. You guys were great. See, you. I, Damien isn't always here, but Benji, Mom and Dad, fantastic. Jaden, fantastic. Now, he's always good and wonderful, so uh, Damien doesn't have to be told. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank yes. you guys. Yes. Give him a round of applause. Thank you guys. That was awesome. Thank you. You know, you take one and you come back with three. I think I'm going to send you out to the community. <laughs> See if you can uh, bring, come back with more. All right. So um, we are going to um, confess our faith with the words of the apostles. Apostles' Creed, so let us say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and it's seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um, if you have any prayer requests, you can always email us, text us, call us. If you're at home and you have a need, let us know so we can pray for you. This is the time that we um, get together to pray for the needs of our church and our community and the world. Let us pray. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us overcome our divisions that we are encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of creation, we pray for this hurting earth. Awaken in us a new desire to care for this world and empower us to support agencies, organizations, and individual efforts to heal our environment. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. God of cooperation, we pray for nations of the world embroiled in conflict. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work towards peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children, who cannot find safety in their home or country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illness. Help them find appropriate care Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst. As they grow, strengthen their faith and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. prayer. Today we want to pray especially for the people in Afghanistan. Diana Burkett, for Carmen Torres, for Cristina Gonzalez, Charlie Ladner, Aiden, for Nayola Lemus, for Joel, for Hector Gelanzianfor, Adolfo Nicolás Esquivel, Jose Pérez, Maria Pérez, for Jake Dent, for Hector Delgado and Jan's brothers, Arnie and Tom, for the Thompson family, for the Marine family, for Bonnie's sister, Janet, for Lee Arisa, for Dwayne, for Bob Hardcastle, Gary Sullivan, Jim and Rosa Stewart, Christopher Neubauer, Carmen Cortez, Jose Maldonado, for Pat, Audrey, Beatrice, Catherine Spaulding, Maria de la Luz, Tom and Cynthia Corellis, for Pat, for Linda, for Joe, Finn Haas, Marty Haas, Jennifer, Jan and Lee, Becky, Ross, Ignacio Langarica, and Antonia Salazar. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died and pray for all who grieve today. Shine your grace on all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. One of the things that I always remind people about your giving that is not necessary all the time about the envelope that you bring to church, but the hands that you put together to bless someone. Um, this is part of our stewardship. 
being able to give to those in need. Um, so I want to say thank you um, to all the people. Uh, a lot of times the, the best gift that you can give to your church is to show up. Because when you show up, this is what happens. It's, it's amazing. So thank you for those that uh, came around on Sunday, last Sunday, and did something for the sake of the world. And that's what is the church is all about. Always uh, continue to encourage those at home to uh, go on our website and find the GIF or the GIF uh, button or donations. Donate and uh, instruction will instruction how to give online. Let us prepare ourselves for communion. If you are at home, um, we always encourage people to have communion, bread, wine ready. For those that are here, we're going to make one line in center aisle. If you can have regular bread, please ask me for gluten-free as you come down to receive uh, communion. The Bible says that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the table is set. Come and be fed.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Happy birthday to those in September, especially this coming week. Carla Bosques was last week. Miguel Felix, Raimundo, happy birthday to all of you. Jose Mata, that was uh, yesterday, Jose, right? Happy birthday. Jose uh, joined in as Carla went back to college. He brought his guitar and started playing in the band. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your time and your gifts. Uh, Marie Wilson, happy birthday. Genevieve Sanchez, Christina Sanchez, happy birthday. Alexandra Ramirez, happy birthday, Ale. Ramon Sarate, happy birthday <laughs> to me. Who is that? Uh, Carrie Burstful, happy birthday. We share, Ale and Carrie and myself share uh, the birthday on the 22nd. And who? And Damien. Damien, why are you not even here? Hermano Damian. You need to write me a note right now so I can put you back in there because I think I put you, but for some reason this list does not show it. So, Damien, where are we going to go celebrate? <laughs> Chocolate cheese or Belgian beaver? I mean, uh, um, <laughs> what's the other one? <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, Mercedes Hernandez, that's the mom with Joel in the hospital. So... Happy birthday. Uh, thank you all who participated in, uh, in our God's work, our hands in one way or another. You were a part of it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, kick off for our confirmation class with uh, San Marcos Lutheran Church as well. We're meeting at San Marcos next Sunday at 3.30 for our new confirmation class. Um, then Ramage Sale, if you have not uh, ever been here, be a part of it. Come and check it out. Um, you can either stand by the table and just talk to people. Um, I always welcome people to do that. And so if you want to do that, we start at 7, we close at noon, come and just spend an hour there at the table. Talk to people about your church. There is hundreds and hundreds of people coming through all day long. So this is a good opportunity for, for all of us, not just for the pastor, but for all of us just to share uh, who we are, what we do, and um, yeah. Just share who we are as First Lutheran here. Um, what else? Um, continue to sign up. I know there's sign ups all the way to 2022, but continue to sign up as we serve the need in our shelters. Bible studies on the 24th of 27th of October, and that is Mr. Uh, Ron Haig be teaching. Uh, he's putting a video together for us to be able to see the introduction of what he's going to be teaching. Um, so. That is on October 27th. Um, hopefully this whole uh, pandemic kind of start dying out and we are able to meet inside in the fellowship. Workouts with Pastor Ramon, two more days, two more days. And um, if you want to celebrate on the 22nd uh, for my birthday, I'll be doing 46 push-ups. Somebody said burpees. I'm not doing 46 burpees. I'm doing 46 push-ups. So uh, if you want to celebrate uh, with me, send me a text. I'll let you know where we're going to get together for that uh, with the workout crew. Uh, flowers, always signed up. Refreshments, always signed up. There is coffee, and it might be some refreshment I think I see. All right, I think that's all. Next week, um, it is God's healing or sinfulness. So if you um, have someone in prayer or you yourself, this is a Sunday where you can come to the altar and we, were, we will pray for you on this coming Sunday. So we're always praying for you uh, in general, but this is an opportunity to, to, to come in, kneel down in the altar, and I will pray here. I will put my hands on you and pray for you um, during worship time. So that's what's happening next Sunday as we hear a message of God's healing. Please stand as you're able. Stand as you're able, and yes, oh, that's right, uh, Chris, Chelsea, uh, Bell, mm. this one is Chelsea, okay, <laughs> Chelsea um, is coming up with an announcement, um, she's doing something, she hasn't told me what it is. So, I'm in another musical, it's not a play this time, it is a musical, 
It's called a 100 Years of Broadway Musical Review. It's a bunch of musicals put together, um, and it is a lot of fun. We have a couple show dates very soon, starting Thursday going to Sunday, but Sunday shows are sold out. So, hmm. But that is. But they can do Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday. Where, where is this? this uh, is at the Broadway Vista in uh, Vista Village. Avil? No. Broadway. Broadway Vista. It's pretty much. It's behind. right next to the Belching Beaver. That's how I know that is there. Ah, okay. That's it. I I drop it off and I see people in there. That's the only reason I know that Belching Beaver exists because she practiced <laughs> right next to it. Okay, so um, uh, Wednesday night, um, I'll be with her, waiting for her there, celebrating my birthday. Um, so if you need tickets, let us know. Let her know um, so we can put them aside for you. Uh, and pay him at the day off that you come and see this. It's a little theater right next to um, Belgian Beer. If you know what that is or where it is, it's right in front of um, Yellow Deli. It's a little more known, I think, for a lot of us, um, or the Adobe building that is right there. Um, all right, let us sing together. My song is Love Unknown, so let us sing. <laughs> of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen.